What is up guys? Happy New Year. First of all, it is 2017 and if you are ready to get in it, start training and get that Don level and go, or if you are a Don, you want a few stones stronger, I wish you the best of luck and I can't wait to get started and I hope you can either. This video is a little bit of a special New Year's video. Um, there's not going to be any go tips per se on how to play the game. Um, but if you've watched my channel, you guys know how much I love drilling down and getting the best practice regimens that you can, getting the most efficient study, being able to use the most of your time, and being able to learn Go while balancing the rest of your life. That's something that I need to do because I'm so busy, and I think it keeps a lot of people from getting as good as they want to at the game. So in the spirit of that for this New Year's video, I would like to offer you guys a bunch of great new tips on how to get better at Go this New Year's. So I think one of the uh, biggest issues um, people have when they try to get better at Go uh, is they say, okay, uh, I'm going to make this resolution, I'm going to play this many games, I'm going to study this much, and that can be great. The problem is they take a look at their other New Year's resolution to-do list, which is like the rest of their life, and they realize that they really don't have all as much time as they think to dedicate to this game. I'm coming from the same sort of situation. Um, my qualifiers for graduate school uh, are coming up at the end of February. As a result, I am working in the lab 12 hour, 10 hour days, sometimes even 12 hours uh, on weekends. I am extremely, extremely busy, but I want to make sure that I can still improve and still feel like I'm getting better at Go. So I came up with a bunch of ideas. Some I've tried and they've worked great and some I haven't and I would like you to try and let me know in the comments below how they work um, to be able to get better at Go when your life is insane. So let's uh, start off. I want to try to get um, useful things that you can start doing right away. So the, the most useful thing you can do to get better at Go is to play the game. Obviously, the more games you play, the faster you're going to get better, and the more fun you'll have, because playing games is really the reason why we want to get better at Go in the first place. So I was talking to one of my um, good friends, George. You may have seen him on stream sometimes or another. Uh, he's a very strong player, about a six on. And I was talking to him about Blitz and you know how useful it is. I've tried to not really play a lot of Blitz um, because I want higher quality games. He said a really interesting thing and that got me thinking about really how we see Blitz and how we see main time games. Take, so, I want you guys to think back at your main time games, games that you've played that weren't Blitz. How many moves did you play that were less than 10 seconds of thinking? Or let's say less than 20 seconds of thinking. Even though you've got 15, 20 minutes on the clock, I guarantee you, if you're anything like me, you make a lot of moves in less than 20 seconds. That could be because your opponent is playing fast, uh, or subconsciously, it could simply be that you're busy and you're in the busy mindset. I've got to get things done. I've got to get my game in so that I can finish this report so that I can go to work. Or I've got to get this game in because my lunch break ends in half an hour and i got to make sure I have enough time. And so if your life is busy, like mine is, you tend to play faster. When you're playing a main time game, you don't realize how many moves you don't think about, like you don't read out completely. Maybe if it's a really complicated fight, you'll think about a move for maybe 30 seconds to a minute, but most of the time you're making moves in 20 seconds or less. If most of your moves are 20 seconds or less, it might benefit you to just play blitz games. Blitz games with no main time and just 20 seconds of B.O. Yomi. But there's a caveat. The trade-off for doing this is you need to run the clock down to five seconds or less for every move. What I mean to say is, even though you have less time to read, you want to make sure you're reading at least 15 seconds on every move. I don't know about you guys, but a lot of games that I play, I don't even read when I'm like responding to a push. Or if my opponent does a shoulder hit, I just, 
I don't think, I don't look to see if there's any better variation. I don't try to come up with a plan for the future. I just respond. It's maybe less than one second of thinking time. So if you, and that's really easy to do because you've got main time and you don't have the little countdown like nine, eight, seven, six. It's really easy to make moves very quickly and not realize how fast you're playing. So I've tried playing 20 seconds main time or 20 seconds Bio Yomi with no main time, uh, three periods, and making sure that in every one of my moves, I'm burning almost an entire Bio Yomi period and I'm submitting my move right before the period ends. That ensures that I'm thinking about every move, only 20 seconds to be fair, but a lot of times I think about moves less than 20 seconds uh, with the main time. So as an overall result, I think I'm thinking a lot more about my moves, making sure that I'm running down the Bio Yomi without any main time than I was when I had 15 minutes of main time. It sounds really ironic and it feels really weird, but give it a try. You'll find that by forcing yourself to burn a Bio Yomi for every move, and since there's no main time, that will be happening since the beginning, you'll be better under time pressure and you'll be able to read and think more quickly and make sure that you're reading on every move. The next tip uh, or strategy I would like to give to you guys is uh, something, ways to passively learn Go and to passively get better at the game. So these are strategies that I'm using um, to try to get my brain in the Go mindset, even though I'm not really doing Go at that time. Uh, one great way to do this is if you have a PlayStation 4 or if you have a DVD player that has internet or a smart TV, I don't know what the tech is nowadays. Um, I use my PlayStation 4 and in the mornings when I wake up and I make breakfast, I turn on a Go video. I put on Dwyron or XHU98 or um, Light Vaulty. He's another really great YouTube Go streamer. Um, and just watch them play Go and watch one of their Go games while I'm eating breakfast. It doesn't burn me any time. I'm still getting ready for the day, uh, but I'm learning passively. I'm looking at their moves. I'm trying to see why they're thinking the way they are. And it's a nice way to get your brain up, uh, get yourself thinking for the day. Um, and I really like watching Go videos in the morning just as I'm making breakfast or brushing my teeth. I think it's really helpful to try to learn more about the game. This next tip, uh, I actually haven't tried yet, so I'm really, really interested uh, to see if anybody who watches this tries it, let me know what, what happens. Uh, I think it's a great idea, but the issue is this is an idea for commutes, for anybody that has a commute and they want to make the most out of their commute. Um, I don't commute. I My lab is like five minutes from my house, so I never actually have to do any long car rides. But if you've got work or a bus ride to school, and there's just a lot of downtime in transit and you want something else to do, this is a great way to get better at reading and board visualization while you're in the car. So what you do is you take a voice memo, your voice memo app on your phone, and you look at a game like this. Uh, I'm gonna start this game from the beginning, just so we know. And the idea that you're gonna wanna try to do is you're going to want to uh, have the coordinates on and describe the moves by specifying what type of move it is and what the coordinate is, on your, like speaking on your phone. So as an example, we're just gonna restart the game. So I'd be recording on my phone, upper right four, four point, lower right four, four point, uh, three, four point facing the top of the board, four, four point, lower left, large extension on the upper left, small night enclosure on the lower left, shoulder hit on the fourth line, yeah, stuff like that. And essentially you would put the coordinates on if it was an ambiguous move and you needed to know what the coordinates were and you would sort of describe uh, what that move was. One space jump, two space jump, enclosure, you know, extension. Then you will have the entire game verbally recorded on your phone. And then when you're driving or if you're on a bus, put it on your phone, put your headphones in and listen to it and try to mentally recreate the game from that voice recording. If anybody's watched Hikaru no Go, I got the idea from the from the scene where they forced Akira to play without looking at the board. 
Um, blind go obviously is super difficult, but the more you would practice this, if you can keep uh, recording these games verbally and then keep playing it over and over and each time trying to visualize more of the board and hold more of it in your head at the same time, that would be so great for your board visualization, for your reading, being able to hold multiple moves at once. And it would fill the time if you're commuting or doing something otherwise boring. I, like I said, it would be hard for me to try this because I don't really commute, but this is, I think it was a really cool idea. So if anybody wants to try that, definitely let me know how it goes in the comments. Um, I think it would be really awesome and it could give you some really badass Go skills. And one last tip uh, that I think everybody can benefit from, and this does have to do a little bit with Go, but this is the resolution that I'm going to try to make for myself for this year in terms of what about my game to fix. There's a lot of subjects of Go, and you know, there's the opening, there's fighting, there's shape, there's all these things. But I think one thing that permeates all of it and keeps us from improving and keeps me from improving are the moves that we know are wrong but play anyway. You know those moves where you play them and you're just like, that was dumb. Why'd I do that? They'll you, like you know instantly, and you see the board. And you're just like, that was that was just stupid. Or those moves where you're like, I know this isn't the best. Like you're thinking about a move, and you're like, I know this is not the best move. But screw it. We'll just we'll just do it, <laughs> and and then just play it, right? Um, I do those a lot. If I can stop doing that. I would take, I would go up by at least a stone, maybe two stones in strength. And so my goal for my game is to not make any more moves that I know were bad right after I played them. And I know how it feels when I'm about to make a move like that. And for some reason I keep doing it. And I know a lot of us keep doing that. So that is bad for two reasons. One, because obviously you're not making good moves and you're less likely to win the game, but two, it, you become unsure of what you know versus what you don't know. Yeah, if you make a bad move, does that mean that you didn't fully understand that concept? Or did you really know that concept and you knew what the right decision was, but you just didn't want to read long enough to actually figure it out? Or you didn't want to think that much about it or you figured it would be fine, right? You're really not sure. So if you keep making decisions that you instinctively sort of know are subpar, you'll never actually figure out what you need to work on to get better at your game. So in light of that, that's like my go resolution, not even to get stronger, but make your resolution fixing something about your game that will make you stronger. Don't make your resolution, I wanna make it to one done. I mean, that's great. But instead of I wanna make it to one time, make your resolution, like I wanna fix X, Y, and Z about my game and I want to practice for this amount of time per week. And you'll get better naturally, right? It's like in Go. You don't set out and say, I want to make more territory than my opponent generally, right? Go is more about if you make good moves and you make good decisions, the points will happen. They, they will happen naturally from attacking weak groups or from being more efficient than your opponent uh, or from making big plays. Um, they come as a result of knowing about the game and making good decisions about the game, not so much saying, I am going to get this many more points than my opponent. So that I think is what I'm going to leave you with. I hope you get all your New Year's resolutions fulfilled. I hope you get a lot better at this game and I hope you enjoy getting better at this game. Um, just some stuff about my channel, because as I mentioned, my grad school qualifier exams are ramping up. I will not be able to stream until beginning of March because I've got one month um, to ace this thing. And no worries though, all of the people who are my patrons that support my channel, you'll still get your game reviews and you'll still get your lessons and you'll still get um, game records that I send you as, as your rewards. So don't need to worry about that. I will still be fulfilling my patron duties. I will still be making videos for everybody. I just won't be streaming. Um, again, I hope you guys get better. Um, definitely consider checking out my Patreon if you want more personalized instruction. Um, the people that do support me are very happy with the service. So I think it's great service for very, very cheap. Um, I hope everyone has a great games and a great year and let's get to one done this year, right? Let's do this. Um, I'll see you guys on the grid and take care.